everyone. Uh, welcome to our first in the uh, five series of In Conversations, where in Exeter we'll be talking to various people from in and around Exeter, with a few which are slightly further afield, but have a, a, an expertise in various things such as late night e evening economy and high street retail and social media. But today for our first one, we've gone for a, a local company which have blossomed and bloomed, and it's CoCars. And I am welcome Helen and James from CoCars and CoDelivery, who will introduce themselves and give us a bit of a background of their business. Over to you, Helen. So I'm Helen Scholes. I'm the marketing manager for CoCars, CoBikes, CoDelivery, because we keep on adding more things to what we do. Uh, CoCars started in 2005 around a kitchen table in Topsham with one man and a dream of not having to own a car, but just being able to use one when he wanted to. And since then, we've grown to a network of around 40 cars across the South West, 30 of those are in Exeter alone. Uh, the whole point with CoCars is it's about, well, there's a few different aims. It's about saving people time, money and hassle by not owning your own car. Most cars are only on the road between uh, two and three and four percent of the time. So actually you're paying for a car that sits there and doesn't do very much most of the time. Um, so it's about reducing congestion as well, making our air and environment cleaner and nicer. Um, so yeah, I think car clubs are something that have really taken off in the UK slightly later than perhaps where in Europe it's something that's quite a common model and has been going for some time. Um, you just pay for the hours you use, so if you want a car for half an hour, that's all you're paying for. If you want to hire it for a day, you can just hire it for a day. You pick it up from a dedicated bay, you drive it around, you do your thing, you bring it back again. Uh, the majority of our mission, our fleet are low emission and we are now investing in more electric cars. We work not only with individuals, but we also work with businesses. So we do a lot of work with businesses um, and develop bespoke solutions for them. So for example, we work with Exeter College, whereby we're helping out with their pool car requirement. So rather than having to pay and maintain for a pool car themselves, we provide the car, we take out all the pain of having to do all the administration and all the maintenance and everything else. They have a nice shiny new car to use when they want to use it. Um, we also operate CoBikes, so CoBikes was the UK's very first on-street docked electric bike hire scheme, that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, we recently expanded in Exeter and I'm sure you've seen them all over the place. We are rolling out around 100 bikes in total, we still got some in the workshop so there's still more or to go out there you can hire those one pound for 20 minutes or you can buy a bike rider ticket which means you get a number of hours cycling for a better price um, they are ideal than rather than using cars for short trips around the city you just jump on a bike because it's an electric bike you can get anywhere you want to really really quickly and then the other part of the business is co-delivery my colleague james is the manager for co-delivery um, and that is e-cargo bike deliveries so a lot of b2b work so working with local organizations like the real food store uh, like the boatyard bakery down on the quay and getting goods moving between them the great things with e-cargo bikes of course is they can go where bikes can go and where cars and vans can't uh, they're zero emissions so they're just uh, powered by people's legs and then the electric battery um, and it just means you can deliver goods quickly and sustainably around the city and it's just a really great idea uh, final point is we have uh, just come to the end of a community share offer which was really exciting um, and have raised a slightly scary around three quarters of a million pounds now that's all going to be invested into the business which means we'll be deploying a lot more electric cars and electric bikes around the city um, and we have also recently been part of a funding bid which means co-delivery has i think four more e-cargo bikes added to the fleet so again lots of opportunities to work with local businesses and do pickups and drop-offs doesn't just have to be to b2b as well it can also be b2c so we are again with boatyard bakery doing stuff where we pick up orders from them and then deliver them to people's houses which took off like a rocket during lockdown and meant people could get some great local suppliers um, really easily delivered straight to their door I'll stop talking for a minute now I've done I've done a spiel so oh, James great your turn. Yeah. I, if I just Cut in a second, James. I was just saying, I was, I was having a coffee with a, a friend yeah. at Chando's this morning and I, I yeah. saw a delivery yeah. of bread coming to them too. Yeah, so I was like, it. it's just a sign for yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a perfect example um, of how uh, co-delivery working with um, Emma's Bread Crop uh, across the city um, and just connecting local businesses and yeah I mean Helen you you basically summed it up perfectly and touched on everything. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's, 
<laughs> um, but yeah, that's exactly what we aim to do um, and do it in a sustainably and environmentally friendly way. Um, I think uh, cargo bikes, e-cargo bikes especially, um, now have, have flattened the hills, as it were, um, and have made things a lot more viable in terms of you don't need to be a superhero to pedal these bikes anymore. Pretty much anyone um, can get on them with a bit of training and, and get out and, and just, yeah, ideally make the city a better place. So, I mean, at the moment, I guess we're really interested in talking to businesses around the city who would like to be part of the service. Um, we've got capacity. So and because we are doing sort of quite regular routes around the city as well, there's opportunities for other businesses to get involved and, you know, pick up some drop offs along those routes, times of day. James can do all the detailed stuff. I just know the broad brushstrokes about it, but he's doing this day in, day out. So how are you finding it, James? Yeah, finding it great. Um, I mean, in terms of, yeah, like, like you touched on, we are, you know, out there pretty much every day, but our Sunday at the moment. Um, and now with the new bikes coming in, it's a fantastic opportunity to expand services. And these new bikes have a really good range as well. So in terms of, you know, how far you can go and how long you can ride these bikes. Um, it used to be something that, you know, it, it wouldn't be possible to use all day without recharging, but now we can do that absolutely no problem. So it's much more viable solution as a replacement to a van, for instance. Yeah, um, yeah fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the capacity on them as well. So we've got a number of different sizes of cargo bikes as well. So. In there and I can't you you can tell me what they're all called but the biggest one the big, um and what's the what's the ton capacity on that do you know that off to so, yeah I'm testing the it. I, yeah the Iceni trikes are we've got two now um yeah they're the biggest capacity um cargo bikes are about 1.3 meters cubed capacity um so two of those equates to basically a kind of small to medium sized van um, and in terms of load as well, they can carry, I think it's up to 200 kilos each. Um, so for a bicycle, that's very impressive and something that, again, can utilize, you know, the extra cycle paths and roads yeah. as well. So you're not just limited in rush hour traffic to roads. So, yeah, you can offer much more efficient deliveries that way whilst carrying big capacities too. Seriously, if you're a bit of a bike geek, you need to get along and have a look at the fleet because you can just see enthusiasts going, oh, look at that cargo bike. And uh, <laughs> looking, looking to get a turn on riding them because they're so much fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, some of the other bikes as well we've got, we've just uh, acquired an Urban Arrow uh, Cargo L as well. So it's a more traditional um, kind of cargo bike setup with a big load bay in the front. And then you kind of sit sit behind it. And again, that's a fantastic bike to ride. It is just like riding a bike once you get used to it. And a real head turner as well. So hopefully you'll be seeing um, me and Rebecca and Joe and a few others out on that around the city. But you all have your favourites, don't you? Because I understand Rebecca doesn't really like cycling the arrows. She prefers the Iceneers. I think she prefers having it when you've got the load at the back and for other people you know far rather have it when you've got the load at the front and it that just feels like the more stable way to cycle so you know they do people do have their favorites <laughs> yeah it is yeah like you said it's, it's down to personal preference and what you 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 get on better with um they all have their kind of yeah um, pros and cons um but for me i think just they're all they're all great in terms of that they're incredibly easy mm -hmm. just to hop on um, and you can just ride off straight away um, and yeah you can, you can get delivering which is fantastic. So James how you know from again from your side of it how do businesses get involved with you and how easy is it for them to you know put orders in and, and yeah. all your sort well, of systems behind the scenes? Yeah I'll answer that question. So yeah um, getting involved um, is as simple as contacting us through um, the website um, so yeah it's codedelivery.co.uk um, there's, there's a hyphen in there. Hyphen in there. Code hyphen. <laughs> co-delivery.co.uk um, also social media channels as well on facebook on instagram and on twitter too um, so that, that's where you can you can first reach us um, the way you can you can arrange deliveries by basically using an online form so we use a delivery management service called Tukan, um, which offers real-time tracking um, and you can book deliveries yourself so say if you're a business that needs a delivery for the next day you can just go online on your phone, use the app or just go on your computer, fill in the form with all the details. We'll then receive that. We'll allocate that order to a rider, sign it, 
and then um, yeah, it'll go from there and the order will be picked up. So yeah, we do offer pick up and drop off service as well. Um, so yeah, we can do that. That's brilliant. I mean, would you be open for anyone just to ask you questions as well through emails and stuff like that? So if I can share your details yeah, of this, yeah, yeah, I think it's absolutely. a really, really crucial thing. I think nowadays a hyper local green delivery service is is key for for retail going forward. And touch wood, we don't go into another lockdown. But having that ability to have it in in the city centre, and you say bikes can go where bikes go rather than the big lorries, big vans. And it's you don't have to fill that lorry up to use it. You can just call up and place your order, place your delivery slot, and it, yeah. it comes to you. I think that's really good, and it's the way you've managed to tailor it towards businesses and consumers. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's um, really I think it's you know it's worth pointing out. I'm sure there's a lot of businesses out there who have already made some changes to what they do because of lockdown and I think in a lot of cases that that's possibly worked for them and it's something they're going to continue with so if part of that mix has become more about doing local deliveries mm -hmm. and it's something that you're trying to manage within your own business at the moment it's definitely worth a conversation with us to just see if we can support you in that and just take one one thing away from your very busy to-do list mm -hmm. um, and again because it becomes sort of a collective thing you know the more business using us the easier it becomes it's mm -hmm. what we're looking at and we'll aspire to in the future as well is having sort of hubs around the outside of the city so you've got that last mile connection so you've got the larger deliveries coming into hub sites we would collect from those on the edge of the city bring stuff into the city so mm -hmm. trying to produce the movement of large vehicles within the city center as a whole so there's you know really interesting things that we hope will be happening over the next sort of one to two years and you know hopefully you'll see even more of our cargo bikes out there. No it's brilliant it's wonderful um have you looked at going further afield with your co-delivery things or are you just trialing out next to start off with? Well you should mention that Emily <laughs> but we will have our first co-delivery bike going live in Salisbury in the next few weeks. Brilliant. So we've already got a number of co-cars in Salisbury. Um, we are bringing co-bikes to Salisbury as part of a project with South Western Railway. Uh, and we have our first co-delivery bike there already. We're just going through the final stages of setting that up. And that's working with your colleagues in the Salisbury bid who have been very supportive. Um, so again, engaging with local businesses in, within the Salisbury bid area and basically replicating what we're doing here and mm. getting it up and running so yeah oh, it's brilliant very well very well time sort of like i prompted you that question emily but i don't think i did did you did no you no no not at all like i just <laughs> I was a really lucky shot i just saw glimpses i thought it's a really good i mean obviously your cars have gone further afield than exeter yeah. i was just thinking maybe this is a chance just to grow as well you say you've got a, a good relationship with the southwest trains is that right you yes just went to that that must be really nice to know that you've got connections with them too. I know, I know it's not necessarily the, the greenest of uh, transport compared to an e-bike, but to have that connection yeah. with other transport people, it must be I good mean, to again, have. Yeah, with, with the trains, obviously, if you look at the number of passengers a train can carry versus mm. what they'd be doing if they were all driving, then absolutely it's a, it's a more environmentally friendly option. Um, mm. And we're very lucky that we've got this great relationship with a gentleman called Andrew Wardley, who we've done work with over a number of years. Yeah. Uh, and what we're looking at is deploying co-bikes at train stations to create that connection. So we have bikes going into Cranbrook train station, Honiton, Salisbury. And there's, there's so much opportunity around that. Um, we've also got a great relationship with Stagecoach, who coincidentally, my former employer, uh, where we're looking at, again, how we can integrate bus and bike more. Yeah. Um, so obviously a lot of our bike stations are close to transport interchanges so mm -hmm. again just make it easy for people to transfer from one to the other and get to wherever they need to go mm -hmm. so that's that's some of the more exciting stuff as well is that sort of intermodal stuff is about trip I think it's called trip chaining you know where people okay. start thinking about actually I could do this bit, this bit this bit mm -hmm. and then gold standard of doing that is you have an app and you develop a mobility as a service system so you can plan your journey from a to b and it will factor in all different kinds of transport you can use and will deliver you like your tailored plan and wow. the even better thing is you can you could pay for that as almost a subscription service so you could pay x amount per month and you know you've got all these different modes of transport covered and you yeah. just go and do your thing not yeah. quite there yet but you know it's happening, it's happening in places like Helsinki. 
Yeah, well, you've got vision, haven't you? So that's, that's brilliant. I think that's absolutely wonderful. It's very exciting, and it's, it's here in Exeter, which is brilliant, you know. I, I, I asked me 10 years ago if I thought transport was exciting, I might have had a slightly different answer, but it really is. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, I mean, from my example of transport, I, I have a driver's license, but I don't have a car. Um, to get to Exeter, I get the train, and from the train, I get the bus. So maybe, maybe next time I'll get a, a co, co bike and try and go up St David's Hill on a bike. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'll survive, but we'll give it a go. You you will do that. It's so easy. So on the e bike, you can just zoom straight up any any hill. Four Street. I've cycled up Four Street. I've had to stop halfway up because there was a bus or something pulling around, and I started again without any bother at all and carried on going. And I could still speak, and I wasn't out of breath. So I tried the e bike. You're like, I don't want to cycle a regular one. <laughs> well, I do, but it's hard work. Yeah, I I went on my first oh, bike ride. Yeah. Two week, two weeks ago, I went on my first bike ride for the first time in about twelve years, <laughs> and my legs were. And this was reasonably flat. I thought, oh my goodness. So I, I do look at an e-bike every now and then. And go, oh, maybe I do that. <laughs> next, next time you're on the train, if you if you're not carrying too much stuff, just grab one of the bikes and try cycling into town, and you'll wonder why you ever thought it was going to be difficult. You okay. really will. You'll just fly up there. Oh, I'd love Guaranteed. to. Guaranteed. Yeah, so, highly recommended. I really appreciate your time with us, guys, and thank you so much for letting us record this so we can share it with other people later on. Um, I will share all your details in the follow-up notes and um, publish it on our website. I really hope that some of our businesses in Exeter will come, come and have a chat with you, James and Helen, about this superb yep. delivery option. I, I see it's the way forward, so even if they can give us a... If they could trial it out for a bit, maybe that's an opportunity for them to just try it for a few Absolutely. few sessions to see if it works for them. Yep. Um, yep. But I'd love to be able to put yep. you in contact. Absolutely. So if you're happy with me to share all this, just give me the thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. Thank That'd you. be fantastic. Thumbs up, James. Thank you. <laughs> Where's your t-shirt, James? Where's your t-shirt? Yeah. Come on. Good thing. Okay. So this. This artwork is like a, a line drawing of Exeter. Can you see it? There we go. I think, there we go. If you, if you look closely, you'll see hidden amongst it are our cars, bikes and uh, cargo bikes. Yeah, so, and also this is on the side of one of our latest Iceni trikes as well. So the big orange one you'll see going around the city. Um, you may have seen that outside Chando's as well. Um, so yeah, and it looks really, really amazing. Really popular. Oh, I love it. Are we, are we allowed to give a shout out to a business on here? I was just going to say big shout yeah, out. Yeah, to yeah, absolutely. Guys, for all their work delivering up all of our cargo bikes, they've done a fantastic job. Yeah, thank you so oh. much, guys. <laughs> no problem. Cool. Thank you so much, guys. I will stop recording. Uh, we'll share. Thank you.